being a professional bodybuilder is obviously fantastic. It's an unbelievable achievement. It's a fantastic achievement. But again, it doesn't suddenly eliminate you from being open to maybe being better. As you can tell, I have a new camera. So don't don't hate me yet. It probably looks a bit weird because I'm trying to figure out some settings and try and change some things around and make it move. I'm trying to make it okay. So just be patient with me. But the camera's spicy and I'm really happy with it. So let's see if it can make me cooler than I actually am. I know I'm doing some in the gym content where I've got more of that coming soon. But I might tickle the idea of potentially doing like, eventually start shifting over to maybe a bit more vlog based content. I like talking about this stuff. It's cool. And I will still continue with this. But I feel like I can't really display my personality very well when I'm sat in front of a screen whereas I feel like I'm a bit of a mess and I feel like that's more noticeable when I'm out in life so maybe that's something we can consider who knows my housemate has made a cats of tearfinell Instagram account they've told me to please plug it because they want to get lots of followers and share other people's cats on there so there you go we're talking about Julia Renee I have probably butchered the name but we're gonna go with it anyway and we're looking at IFBB wellness pro leg workout so this is interesting because firstly uh, she's actually blocked me on Instagram, which is interesting because I made a video where I stated due to her status as an IFBB pro in the Olympia scene that there is a chance, a high chance that in my opinion, she may not be natural. Uh, she blocked me for that. Interesting. But we're going to talk about the workout and there are a couple of things I actually want to address that not just following from, on from this workout, but the, the topic in general. And I'm going to get to that very shortly. So first we're going to start with the belt squat. What I found for this one is that weirdly enough, even though it's on my low back, it doesn't hurt my low back as much as squats. This is actually really interesting because when I had a really bad back, so I actually herniated a disc many years ago, one of the big things that really helped me power through leg workout was the belt squat. Because again, although the, the load is essentially being held on the lower back, it's not a compressive exercise. Therefore, the, the load is not obviously compressing the spine due to the positioning and where the load actually is being held. So that's very valid. And when I, like I said, did have bad back, it really did help me. But the belt squat is actually a really fantastic movement. Really fantastic. But it's actually quite a rare movement to that in the sense that not a lot of gyms have a belt squat machine. I would say it's arguably more similar to a leg press than maybe a typical squat. A typical squat will very much typically work the quads in their lengthened position, whereas the belt squat due to peak tension and whatnot, again, based on my experiences, seems to work the quads more in their mid position, which is very similar to a leg press. But honestly, it is a really great bit of kit if you had it, and I would definitely throw it in there. Just be wary. You see how Julia is holding on here? She's being very gentle with how she's holding on. She's not grippy and pulling herself up. That's the point. We don't want to grip and yank ourselves up because then we're taking emphasis away from the quads and the legs in general and then actually pulling ourselves into position which is obviously not what we want to do. Good technique from Julia, she's getting good range of motion. At the end of the day you got to go as low as you need to go for the target musculature. So if you're looking at targeting the glutes you may not necessarily go as low. If you look at targeting the quads you probably want to go as low as possible. The other thing that's great with the belt squat is there's actually a, a movement where you can really drive the intensity high and push to failure without fear or I guess too much risk of injury because there is going to be no bar falling on your back which is obviously going to be a bit of a, a hindrance for a lot of people when they're squatting they don't want the bar to fall and collapse I understand that I've actually had that happen to me once before I was squatting don't know what came over me as I got halfway up the rep I said you know what great idea let go of the bar the sound of silence by disturbed started playing and everything went black and white and I just fell we're starting with a superset now three sets of 12 pendulum squat supersetted with an AMRAP of single leg extensions. The pendulum squat is arguably one of, if not my favorite quad movement. I'm kind of torn between whether I prefer the pendulum squat or the hack squat, but due to like the lack of stability that's really demanded from this movement and the ranges of motion you can go through and the position it allows you to get into, it really is a top tier movement. But again, I would say it's actually quite a rare piece of kit to have and not a lot of gyms have one. I mean, in my area, I've got quite a few gyms around me and there's only one gym that actually has a pendulum squat. Honestly, I would 100% use it if you have one. It's fantastic. And again, similar to machine-based squat patterns, so that you can load it quite safely without worrying about stability demands, and also without worrying about what would happen if you failed. Like I said, it is a machine, therefore failure is going to be a bit safer, typically with machines. Superset it with the leg extension. Again, you know my thoughts and opinions on supersets. I think compound sets where you're working the same muscle in different positions, like a pendulum squat and a leg extension where you're going lengthen to shorten, are definitely a good time, and you can definitely include them. But I probably wouldn't prioritize them as my main work. I'd probably push them maybe later 
later on in the session towards the end and I'd also flip it around. The muscles typically tend to fatigue first so they tire first in shortened position dominant movements and in just the shortened position in general and if the leg extension is shortened position and then the pendulum squat is a lengthened position it would make more sense to go to the shortened position first followed by a lengthened position movement afterwards but again I'm not sure I would pair those two movements together myself although you certainly can it's just my preference I would separate the pendulum squat on its own and then the leg extension on its own too. That being said with those three movements chosen you've worked the quads in their mid position their length of position and their shortened position that, that's all you really need to do for quads and arguably you don't even need to do that if it's not that important to you i think i'm a big fan of that i would just call it there regarding the quad volume i think that's that's plenty for a day that being said i know when she was doing the belt squat she was doing more of a glute bias belt squat which is fine i'm just saying that you can make it very much a mid position quad movement as well quick plug go throw it in there remember community coaching is always linked down below in the description and maybe even the comment section as well as is the tfnl growth guide workout guide and routine and fitness resource they're always linked lingering around the place and with the community coaching again there's a home workout option and a gym workout option and both of them currently have a one week free trial going on if you fancy give it a crack but again there's never any pressure basically i'm going to call it we're running the rack so we're going to do as heavy as we can for 10 reps it's literally just like keep going down and wait until you can't anymore so again, so what she's essentially doing here is, is she's, like she said, running the rack, in which case it, it's a form of drop setting. And drop setting is where you typically do a load for a certain number of reps. Once you've hit that rep target, whatever it may be, you take off some load and then go again, and then go again, however many times you see fit. One thing I will point out here is see how she's holding herself in the pad? I typically try and avoid doing so. The handles at the bottom are here for a reason. The big thing is, is when you hold yourself up there, a lot of times that can encourage your hips to shift off the pad and then your bum to lift off, which then puts a lot of pressure on your lower back when you're leg pressing which is not what you want so really hold those handles and pull yourself into the leg press as hard as you can to make sure you keep your bum and lower back planted so at the start of the video she actually said that one of her issues on stage was that she was really quad dominant and she wanted to do a bit more of a glute emphasis workout which is which is fantastic but a lot of the movements she's choosing regardless of whether it's shifting bias to the glutes or not are still going to be very quad dominant i think there are probably other alternatives she could consider for example when she's doing the leg press what you could do is bring the feet as high as you kind of can within reason to minimize knee flexion so minimize how much the knees are bending but maximize how much the hips are moving thus lengthening the glutes further and shifting even more bias from the quads to the glutes the goblet squat again if the quads are a strong point for her but her posterior chain is a weakness being her hand strings and her glutes then why do more quad dominant movements i'm not a bodybuilding professional but these are just my thoughts and opinions and i'm going to actually elaborate on that very soon okay from this we're going into in a form of cable abduction for the glutes superset actually with a dumbbell hip thrust i think it's interesting to note how if, if claiming one of the uh, the weaknesses of her physique again from a professional standpoint it, it's partly going to be glute development but she's choosing two movements i think the abduction is okay but with the dumbbell hip thrust i think ultimately the limiting factor is largely going to be how much weight you can load i would much rather favor a barbell hip thrust because then you can load more weight thus actually realistically take yourself closer to failure more effectively to get 50 pounds for reps to failure I probably needs to do a lot of reps a lot of enough of reps but whereas you could probably actually ugly get more effective reps within like the hypertrophy rep range if you were to actually load the bar heavier using a barbell the, the big thing i actually want to talk about is kind of semi on from what i spoke about earlier there's this big thing that goes around the industry and i actually get this comment quite a lot people will say to me they look better than you so why would i listen to you and also another one is they're professional they must know what they're doing put in perspective so i qualified as a personal trainer so i qualified as a fitness professional 10 years ago i have seen some personal trainers in my time i've seen many personal trainers in my time that look fantastic but but in all honesty, the stuff they were promoting their clients was genuinely really dangerous, outdated, and actually just, just wrong. But the argument is, oh, they look good, they must know what they're doing. Again, that's just highlighted that's not necessarily the case. Another thing, obviously, oh, they're professional, they must know what they're doing. Anyone could be a fitness professional being a personal trainer, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're a good one. And being a professional bodybuilder is obviously fantastic. It's an unbelievable achievement. It's a fantastic achievement. But again, it doesn't suddenly eliminate you from being open to maybe being better. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying I'm wrong. I'm not saying she's right or wrong. I'm merely stating that our opinions and our approach to training might be slightly different. Just because she may have achieved something I haven't, being professional status, doesn't mean that my opinion should be invalid. 
Uh, although achievements are certainly very important, I don't think credibility should solely rely on what you've achieved. Again, this came on the Lean Beef Patty video. Someone commented something along the lines of, Will and Lean Beef Patty look better than you, so they must be doing something right. Just because somebody looks apart doesn't necessarily mean they know what they're doing. I'm not saying they don't know what they do, I'm just saying it just doesn't necessarily mean they do. Because one of the big things is you ever go around the gym, so um, let's say you go somewhere like Spit and Sawdust Gym, you'll see one thing in particular, which is the biggest individuals with the most muscle aren't always necessarily training the best, they're probably just training the hardest. And this goes into the importance of intensity is one of the most important things to consider when looking at building muscle and progressing. And the other thing to note is no one really knows what I look like. If you go through my videos, you will always note and notice that I never reveal what I look like. I deliberately keep my physique hidden from, from YouTube. It's a bit more apparent on Instagram, but even then it, it's not really. I will often be caught wearing either three or four XL hoodies, jumpers or t-shirts in my videos. And I do that because I don't want people's opinions of me to be determined by how I look. I want your opinion of me to be determined by my knowledge, by my approach to training, my philosophies surrounding training, but also my behaviors and how I treat other people. I want your opinion of me to be formed and based on my qualities as a human rather than how I look. For that reason, I, I will likely rarely ever show my physique on YouTube. I will keep that to my more personal accounts being obviously my Instagram, and that will likely always be the case. But it's all too easy for somebody to make the comment of they look better than you, so they must know what they're talking about when no one really knows what I actually look like. And I'd like to keep it that way. The, the kind of fact of the matter when it comes to the, the, the train side of things is some people are simply just built different. Even pros have coaches that likely, in many cases, don't necessarily look as good as they do. PEDs, so performance enhancing drugs, are also a, a thing that many people need to consider when, when things like this are thrown into the mix that a lot of people aren't open about, and I completely understand why. And also, especially in the pro leagues, performance enhancing drugs are definitely a thing. Shout out my friend Corey, who is very clued up and very knowledgeable about PEDs, especially in women, and she speaks very openly and educates a lot of people on her Instagram so I would definitely recommend giving her a follow if you're interested in learning a bit more about that side of things. Although none of that discredits their hard work, not at all. You, you can't purely rely on they're bigger than you so they must know more than you or they're a pro therefore they must know more than you. It, it's a lot deeper than that. Although those, those are definitely variables to consider and are relevant, they aren't everything. But now we're going to quickly crack on with comment question of the week and it's from Moose. What will, could, might your next tattoo be? and why. Uh, to be honest with you, I actually don't know. At this stage, because I am hopefully looking to compete in bodybuilding in the very near future, tattoos aren't necessarily a great thing for bodybuilding, unfortunately, so I might have to hold off for a while. At some point, I would like to be absolutely covered in them because I'm a big fan of tattoos. And although I know a lot of people may not necessarily like that, I completely understand, at the end of the day, it, it, it certainly is my body and my choice. I think although there's a stigma surrounding tattoos and it can alter how people may perceive me, I'd really rather people, I say this to everyone who kind of says, oh, tattoos make you look X, Y, Z. I'd really rather I be judged and assessed and opinions be made of me based on my behaviors, so how I treat them and how I treat other people rather than how I look. And this obviously goes back to my physique as well as my tattoos. My appearance shouldn't dictate my quality as a human, my actions, my beliefs, and my behaviors should. But yeah, great question. I, that's a good one, I like that. That is it, that is the video. Thank you for tolerating me. Thank you for tolerating the work in progress camera situation we have going on right now. And thank you for tolerating the video.